All right. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, welcome to today's webinar. My name is Martha Serrano. Uh, I am the coordinator for the Money Management Center here on campus. Um, so yeah, so today we have an awesome uh, webinar. And just before we actually get started, I'm going to put in the chat box our website for the Money Management Center. So in case you're not as familiar with what we do or some of the programming that we have coming up for the spring semester, you can check out our website. Um, but yes, if you, everybody does have any questions or comments, go ahead and use the chat box. If not, the Q&A future um, should be another option. Uh, but yes, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, so our presenter is Lila Player from Wells Fargo. She has a presentation on saving for an emergency. So Lila, I'm going to go ahead and um, turn it over to you now. Awesome. Hi, guys. I just want to first and foremost, thank you all for joining me here today. Um, I know that this is crunch time. It's <laughs> finals are right around this right around the week, I assume, or you're preparing for them now. So I really uh, appreciate your time and joining us here today. I'm going to go ahead and get this slideshow up and going. Awesome. All right. Can you see everything? All right, Martha, if you can just give me a thumbs up. Awesome. Awesome. Great. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, uh, so yes, we're going to talk about saving for an emergency, a little bit about myself. Um, uh, my name is Lila Player. Um, I work here for Wells Fargo. I've been here for about a year or so now. Um, I'm located in San Francisco, California. Um, a little bit about my background. I actually come from the world of education. So this is something I'm very passionate about. Um, I actually made the change in my life because um, this topic and preparing students for being just financially successful is something that um, is really dear to my heart. So uh, that is a little bit about myself. As on a side note, I want to just mention that your leader, Martha, is an exceptional leader. Um, she's probably one of the best decision makers that I've worked with so far. So, you know, she definitely cares about your guys' well-being. And when you get a chance, just don't forget to say, hey, thank you. We really appreciate you, right? All right, so let's dive in. Saving for an emergency. This is one of my favorite topics, right? Because it's something that is so important that we kind of often just kind of forget about. Um, we think it's a great idea, but it's just something that just kind of comes and goes. And we think, oh, I'll get to it at some point or just not financially ready to do it right now, but there's no better time than now, even if it's just a little bit. So let's talk about that. Um, in these uncertain economic times, um, it's more important than ever for students to start building an emergency fund. <clears throat> emergency savings offer financial uh, protection during a time when you may have unpredictable things that happen uh, in life. Um, I can definitely speak to this, whether I was a student, not a student, a grad student, a parent, um, things happen, right? You get an unexpected bill, a textbook costed more than you anticipated, um, you have a health thing that comes up, life just happens. And so that's why it's so important to really start building this fund. Um, today, we're going to talk about uh, what, <clears throat> excuse me, what an emergency fund is, how to create an emergency fund, how to manage this fund wisely, and really just all the workings of what that will look like. So let's go ahead and dive in. Awesome. So if there's one thing students can expect when it comes to planning their financial lives is that there will be surprises. Um, I'm sure you can all attest to that. I know I can. Um, your car might need new tires. Definitely been there. Your laptop can unexpectedly break, or you might need to take, you know, an unplanned flight home um, for whatever the circumstance might might be, whether it's good or bad. Um, this is where an emergency fund really comes in handy. So many students prepare uh, for unexpected reoccurring expenses like tuition, rent, car payments, stuff like that. But we oftentimes overlook how we are going to deal with unexpected expenses um, that will definitely arise. So an emergency fund is the rainy day fund, right? Um, you can always count on it to cover those costs that are unexpected. Um, so let's look at why you need an emergency fund and how it's going to help you. So an emergency fund is greatly is used to greatly reduce you know stress after um, accompanying various big events that that kind of just happen. Um, I can't tell you how many times I can relate to many of these pictures that are on the screen. Um, 
unfortunately, the phone one more than I sh more than it should be. Um, and so having money set aside gives you options just to be flexible. And so it doesn't have that stress uh, that's on you that to come up with money that you just don't have. Um, an emergency like a medical expense or a car, computer repair, replacing, you know, that cell phone, um, it, it just happens and we don't anticipate it happening, but it does. But as we see in this next slide, many people find themselves unprepared uh, for these emergencies. If you don't have an emergency fund, um, you're definitely not alone. 56% of Americans can, can't can cover $1,000 in unexpected expenses. I've definitely been there. I'm definitely, can definitely relate to this. Um, even 20% of people experience significant unplanned expenses every single year. So with that said, having an emergency fund can provide for those unplanned expenses um, to have a backup plan. Eventually, there might be situations where you need these funds. Hopefully not, but it could happen, right? Creating an emergency fund shifts your focus from being prepared rather than being overwhelmed in the situation with this financial surprise. And I can definitely speak to being a student. There you have so many other things that you have to worry about, right? You have family that you're not home with. You have social issues that are constantly in your face. And the most important thing is school. And the last thing that you need to worry about is having these unexpected, terrible things that come up and you're just not prepared for it. And my pride, knowing my pride is you don't want to go ask anybody for that money, right? So being self-reliant and having this emergency fund is ideal. Awesome. So we've established why emergency funds are important. I've said emergency fund probably a hundred times so far. Um, and so now let's go ahead and discuss how getting started, how to get started on one. Um, it doesn't have to be difficult. Um, it can be really easy and we'll just ease right into it. Even if you have a really tight budget, we're going to just discuss on some options that we can kind of get started on. All right. So your emergency fund should allow you to live comfortably. Um, without touching your savings or your other debt and stuff like that, your other life expenses, um, which is very real, generally speaking, an emergency fund should cover three to six months of your expenses. Um, but that once you have that in your workforce, it, the flow just kind of works much better. After all, a job loss or emergency health problem could lead to a period of times without income. So having these expenses covered is where we all strive to be. Um, but while you're a student, start with just the goal of saving $1,000. Um, this is just a suggested amount. Of course, to make it as big or as small as, as you think will best fit your lifestyle, if you will. Um, and to get started on that, we just want to start just a small one, right? And a little bit goes a long way. Awesome. So when it comes to setting aside a portion of your monthly income to go into your emergency fund, even a small amount, like I said, is just going to go a long way. If your budget is tight, you can even go as far as just saving $25 a month. Um, and that's going to provide a nice cushion if you're really consistent with it. So if you're able to set aside a little bit more savings, say let's say $50 a month for 20 months, you it will get you to $1,000, which is what we discussed was an initial goal. Um, as will saving $100 a month for 10 months, you'll also have obviously simple math, you'll have that same amount. If your income increases at any point during this time, of course, we suggest adding a little bit more, but use that with your own discretion, right? Everybody's situation is gonna obviously be different. Um, after graduation, add to this $1,000 until you reach your goal of a fund that will cover that three to six months. I can just definitely speak from experience. Three to six months while a student is just not realistic. That's why we make that suggestion of that $1,000, and that's just a really good starting, starting point. Awesome. So let's go ahead and take a look at how much you might already have in savings. If you already have a dedicated savings account, you might want uh, to be a part of a way to start your emergency fund. 
Consider whether some of your savings is already set aside for planned expenses versus, you know, paying off that debt, that your monthly bills that you have. Um, if so, don't consider this money to be a part of your emergency fund, right? Because we have to count on that. We have to live every day. We have expected costs that just come up that we just have to deal with. Um, as for your emergency fund itself, if you don't already have an emergency fund savings account, consider setting up a separate savings account specifically for this emergency fund. The way This way, you won't be tempted to dip into it, right? Because I can definitely tell you there's been times that come up and you're just like, oh, just take a little bit here, take a little bit there. If you have the set aside and you have the right mindset of just not dipping into it, it just makes life a little bit easier. Awesome. So I'm halfway through my presentation. I just want to take a quick pause, see if anybody has any questions. I'm definitely going to open this up at the end as well. So don't feel any pressure whatsoever. I'm just going to take a few seconds, take a pause. Awesome. Okay, no problem. No questions, no problem at all. I'm very laid back. So if you do come up with anything, please feel free, raise your hand, let us know that you that you have a question. Awesome. So if you don't already have a monthly budget, this is a critical step in being able to save for an emergency, um, to find extra money in your budget to create an emergency, emergency fund. So let's take a look first at your spending habits. The way you can get a realistic picture of what your money is looking like, whether how it's going in and how it's coming out, will determine your progress and how you're working towards your emergency savings uh, goals. After you assess this um, and your spending habits, uh, as far as your income and reviewing your monthly expenses, determine where you can just save a little bit more extra here and there every month. Um, just by cutting back on spending. <laughs> cutting back doesn't necessarily mean missing every party or missing every event, but it just, just means being a little bit more mindful of the things that you're doing and how you're spending your money. Awesome. So I can definitely say saving can be very challenging, right? If you don't find a need um, to change your spending habits to set aside this extra money each month, um, there are many online tools that can definitely help. A digital spending log can track your daily spending and help your uh, identity and ide um, opportunities and where your money is going. Um, consider upping your budget game with uh, digital tools to make things available. So just right off the bat, if you do have a Wells Fargo account and you don't know about some of these options, um, I highly recommend you take a look at these tools. They're very useful. Um, make the thinking and taking the thinking out of the situation. Um, with that said, if you don't, there are a lot of great resources out there as well um, that I highly recommend you just educate yourself on, take a few minutes, look into it. Um, it's definitely beneficial and, and it's impacted my life. Awesome. So while budgeting and savings for a long time uh, goal takes some time, um, there are many ways to generate more money and to put a, more aside for your emergency fund. Um, if cutting back on some spending options um, isn't allowing you to progress as quickly as you would like, um, find ways to bring in a little bit more money. These options could include asking for cash for your birthday. <laughs> yeah, everybody wants that, right? As we get older, that's all we say <laughs> that we want. Um, Putting financial aid refund checks, you know, into that emergency fund, just considering how you're spending that money, um, you know, start a little side options, you know, as far as getting into homemade, selling homemade items. These are things that you probably are all already doing and considering, but if you're not, if you haven't considered it, give it a thought. Awesome. So managing that emergency fund. After, <clears throat> after you're on the path to building this emergency fund, stick to your new budget um, and manage your fund wisely. O only withdraw from your emergency fund in the case of a truly true emergency. You should use, separate, you should use a separate account to save for planned expenses, um, like your spring break trips and your birthday gifts, stuff like that, right? So have a separate account for those things and a different account for these unexpected situations that come up. If you do have to withdraw from your emergency fund, replenish it as quickly as possible, just because you never know sometimes when it rains and pours and you get hit twice. Awesome. So uh, putting your savings plan into action. 
make sure to adapt your monthly budget um, to reflect how much you're putting into your emergency fund. It's helpful to set an automatic transfer into your emergency fund, which I can definitely speak that this definitely helps. Um, you contribute to this fund every month without even thinking about it, right? It just automatically goes into it and you can control what that looks like. By timing your automatic transfer into your savings account, take, uh, and take, that takes place the same time with your paycheck that you determine how it goes, um, it just takes the thinking out of this and it's just seamless, it's a seamless process. Beautiful. So your emergency fund should change as your needs and your lifestyle change for sure. Life events like moving in, in and out of a dorm is a huge difference, right? As far as getting your own place. Um, and your emergency fund should adapt accordingly to your life situations. After graduation, you pay and your expenses are likely to increase, unfortunately. Um, and as that happens, reevaluate re your budget and emergency fund and adjust your savings and your goals as necessary. Okay, so this is a little bit uh, involved. Um, if you want to take a picture of this for future reference, please do so. Um, while you can't be certain of when you're going to need this emergency fund, you can definitely be fairly sure that you're going to need it at some point. So let's summarize what we've talked about today. Here's a checklist for everything that you need in order to have a successful emergency fund. Determine how much you will need to cover your expenses. We recommend starting with that goal of $1,000. Confirm how much you've already saved and could be applied a little bit extra as far as your emergency fund goes. Track your spending to look for opportunities to save more and consider you know, maybe like a side job or getting into some other options to bring in a little bit more money while you're in school. Um, develop a plan to help build your emergency fund by making a budget, which is so crucial. Um, setting it up in an automatic transfers into your savings account and your emergency fund is just a seamless process that will definitely help you be successful. And lastly, update your savings plan and life as life happens, um, especially after graduation, financial, financial situations are most likely going to change. All right, man, we blew, blew right through that, that presentation. Uh, today we covered your need for emergency fund, how to create an emergency fund and how to manage it wisely. Um, with this knowledge, you can uh, begin to build your emergency fund and give yourself protection from unexpected expenses, both now and after you graduate. Before we end, I just wanna take a moment here just to share a few valuable resources um, with you all. So this is probably my favorite slide of all of them. And I please ask you guys to take a picture of this. Um, this is one of the reasons why I decided to work with Wells Fargo versus some of our competitors. Um, so here you'll see our scholarships, right? So you definitely wanna take a look at this. Um, there's a lot of great resources on this page. Um, we highly recommend you visit our College Steps site at wellsfargo.com. You can see forward slash uh, College Steps. Um, and please go ahead and scan that barcode if you want to get any more information. You can more than welcome to take a look at some of our web webinars that we have on YouTube as well. All right. So if you live in California, if you live pretty much anywhere throughout the country, there's a Wells Fargo nearby. If you need any assistance or if you have any questions and you want to talk to somebody in person, please feel free to reach out. I'm more than happy to assist at any time. And that is all I have for today. Thank you guys so much for joining or sticking through with me. All right, let's get in here. Stop sharing. There we go. Okay, so I just want to open it up. If anybody has any questions, fantastic. If not, no pressure whatsoever, but I just want to thank you all for sticking through with me. I value you guys' time, and I hope you guys have awesome, awesome um, uh, uh, tests coming up, so, and great holidays. Thank you so much, Lila. We appreciate all this information. And again, uh, for everybody, the students, um, this webinar will be recorded and it'll be posted on our website in case you missed out some information or need to refer to any of the slides. I'll have the webinar recording. And I put in that chat box as well, our website. 
Um, so it has more information. Um, it has an awesome tool. It's called Unleash Money Portal. So for the budgeting or saving for an emergency, that's a really uh, very important tool to use. And then we have our calendar of events for the spring semester as well. And we would love for Lila to come back for the spring semester and, awesome. and do some more webinars for us. Definitely. Well, thank you guys all so much. Martha, I hope you have a great holiday and I'll be in touch soon. All right. Thank you. Thank you everybody Thanks, for joining in. All right. Bye-bye.